Welcome back to the show. Hope you've been having a great time on Daybreak this morning. And now let's get into the discussion proper. And now, last minute contract awards and other actions being taken by incumbent governors who are expected to vacate office on the 29th of May are creating concerns in affected states. While returning governors and freshly elected ones promised better deals to citizens when they recently received their certificates of return, there are fears that incoming chief executives would inherit huge contractual liabilities from their predecessors. Now to discuss this, we're being joined by public affairs analyst, Sadiq Abubakar. Good morning to you. Uh, good to have me. It's good to have you join us in the studio uh, this morning. Thank you very much. Now, taking a look at all of this, I know that some governors are raising eyebrows already about uh, some of these appointments, last-minute contracts being awarded. What do you think is going to be the, the, the impact of this in some of the states that are affected? Um, on a very sincere note, you see, um, as you know, government is a transient thing and um, uh, the proceedings of what is coming from the affected state precisely, um, if I may be very precise with the ones that were pronounced, is that of Benue, Sokoto, and a bit of conscience raised uh, by Kano, and that of um, Abia. I think these are the ones that are more pronounced. Starting from the contractual um, uh, issues tend to be the ones that are a bit salient but are more pronounced because it has to do with the um, variations of the existing contracts. That is in the case of Sokoto precisely mm -hmm. where uh, a 7 billion era it tend to be incurred more on a contract 4.2 uh, uh, precisely from the ongoing um, uh, teaching university, teaching hospital, and uh, a one million precisely from the premier uh, hospital in Tamboal, then one also in one of the local governments. That's for the contractual. Uh, him, he didn't do uh, an appointment. What this turns to me, uh, he, in justifications to the claim by the Sokoto state governor, he tend to say that the reason why uh, these variations became necessary is because of the hype of uh, equipment in the market, even if it is not too satisfactorily to the people that have raised the eyebrow. Mm. But the ones that tend to be a more alarming is that of Benue, uh, where you have an appointment of 2,000 teachers. teachers mm. And you tend to ask um, of all times that uh, even one of the problems highlighted before now, it's even not been able to pay Salary. salaries and now you're appointing 2,000 teachers. Mm. That seems to be a bit uh, on an unfair nature to like analyze, okay, as much as you say the justification is you're appointing people from the states, but what did you do to the salaries? And, mm. and you know, when you come with the, with, with the liability that tend to be in the service, you need to be in the system for the, another number of years and there will be growth. So are you being real or fair to the incoming government? That is another question to answer, despite, uh, relating to what perspective are you coming mm. from? And also, he has secured for the first time in a long time also the uh, NACA, uh, the, uh, uh, the Nigerian Civil uh, for Aviation to uh, construct uh, an airport, airport mm. uh, 12 uh, kilometers away from the Makodi uh, town. That also, uh, they keep justifying the fact that you have to wait until the dime, the you don't even have a say now until it's on 29. They're still in charge of the states until 29, or, or better say on 28th of May, mm -hmm. when their time elapses in office and your time starts as the 29th of uh, May. But the questions are, when you come to uh, Plateau, it's also funny because on last Tuesday, he appointed five uh, states uh, high court judge. Mm. and also the chairman of the customary Court of appeal and they said that from his foundation the incoming uh, governor is asking him why didn't he do that knowing that uh, being a, a lawyer 
So he believed by his orientation he should have also earlier on made this appointment. When you highlight all of these things and you come to uh, also in the Abia where he tend to have, um, appoint um, board of directors and also that have been including promoting those guy rocking some appointments to even permanent secretaries that mm -hmm. all of these things what they generate is whether it's done in the good of the people or you're trying to put the burden of the people who think that okay they have come with their manifestos and they want to do well there should there be a law hmm. uh, actually guarding against this i mean you are on your way out this person is coming in why must should you burden that incoming administration with things that they they actually have no say over should there be a law to, to guide against that um that's talking about a law you know it's a lot of proceedings mm -hmm. but like i said uh normally government of whichever kind even if it's a tier government which is a local government is transient mm -hmm. by implications if there are no harms to whatever decisions you make which are much more likely like i said when you check the indices of the liabilities in most states borrowing and all of that that it gives it's normally alarming when you're transiting but mm -hmm. When you make it look obvious and everybody get to know, are you really intending well for the state you've served for almost eight years mm. and now you're going out just because you think your anointed candidate, if I should use it, you know, have yes. not, did not get, which oh. is to say, okay, let me do my last bit of the contractual, uh, whatever that we're going to do. Because normally we know variations and review of projects are, are actually by most of the government, let's be fair, if there is a time in a contract, normally in the engineering, it's called a RETS, a, a, a it's a review of contracts. Um, so normally, uh, most of the projects, uh, once it gets to some years, because of, you know how the Nigerian building market is, it's transient and it also fluctuates, most on the high or skyrocketing mm. part. So most of the projects actually are due to some some of them will even be reviewed to the presidential because if it gets to some amount, it's not even within the state. Exactly. The state governors have to come to the... So not all are actually problematic, but where it is obvious is mm. when you start appointing. I'm forgetting like in the state, in the Kano state, the incoming or the elected, the newly elected governor has been given his adversary. Mm. I think even the transition committee went ahead to even start questioning uh, to his first adversary is to stop all um, uh, construction so or any land any yeah. anything going on in public place or place of worship mm. uh, hospitals and also that I might not think it's okay by the move because it tend to be like okay stop what you're going uh, through now in the construction what if they had paid they need to complete the work yeah but and going again i think even in responding to the chairman uh the algon telling them not to even do anything to siphon public funds for finding all of the rerun elections in some states according to uh, they allegedly said that money are uh, being asked by the uh, local government chairman mm. to provide in order to fund elections. And the they, they BAPA, who is the chairman of the Algon in Kano State, him uh, to say, uh, wait until you are in office, office, then you can decide all <laughs> decide. of this thing. Okay. All of these issues are of worries because we knew the system that uh, runs a government continuity in this country, and that is why it's of concern that if you check out all of this, you might think, okay, they are trying to still have a little bit achievement of what they have done so far in office or what they need to do. Mm. But whether it's well intended or it's well conceived by the persons mm. in, in, in question, uh, the incoming government, that is where well, it's Well, the timing is what raises the question. I mean, mm -hmm. that what raises the question of the motive. I mean, why now? Yes. It, obviously, that is what I said. I mm. said, why now? Because most of this project, including the appointments, uh, most especially that of the appointment, uh, uh, putting on who are the commissioners at this time, at uh, this permanent secretaries, and giving appointments, this, uh, and appointments of boards and all of this. I think it's a way of putting yourself and and always 
raise a question of concern because mm -hmm. when you're now um, elevating people to permanent secretaries positions, it could be also being perceived as a way of planting people in the system or managerial system to frustrate an incoming administration. Now, talking about frustrating an incoming administration, now we've seen the resultant effect. This is not the first time this is happening. At the end of a political era, you see all of this happening. It happened in Imo State, yeah. where people were given appointments and then we have interim government coming in and everybody has to lose their job. This is one of the effects. It happened in, uh, I think, in Ekiti as well. So, don't you think that this is putting the governors elect and the people at loggerheads when this eventually happens? Like I made it clear, you see, in the three tiers of government that we have in, uh, in Nigeria, you have the, the, the federal, the state, second tier, the local government, not even area council elections. Most of the area council come, which a local government comes, and before you go out, you give a last phase appointment when you come. Uh, it's either whether the chairman now suspend or dismiss people that have been appointed at the mm -hmm. last lap. Mm -hmm. And also, people will start crying, why would you start on this wrong routines? Mm -hmm. Because you just came. But not being feared to whoever is inheriting of such uh, administrative, and also who are coming at the transition committees, because their recommendation is going to check on what are the liabilities, how do, were they incurred? Were they things that were systematically incurred? Or they were things that were deliberately forced at the dying minute mm. because they are picking from the ditch uh, pots at the last minute, which are mostly what transition committees have been involved in too. One at the local government, one at the state government. So I should know how it comes. Whoever the, comp the composition of a transition committee now comes is where they check and see what is the history of how the monies are accumulate, uh, accumulated? Before becoming a governor or vying for governor, you should have known what is the liability tendencies of a state and what are you coming with the system. Also, you that you're going, don't forget that the, the only thing that gives you the immunity is because you're a governor. Mm. And you're losing that part if you're not being sincere with the positions or transitions of how you want to get out of the government. You also be called to answer questions. And for you that is taking also, you might desist being honorably and said, okay, no, we know that this is a proceedings. I'm a civil servant. I know you want to skyrocket me to a position, but I prefer to be here because I don't want to be subject to uh, an abuser tomorrow that somebody just come and said, no, this is not it. Mm -hmm. But if you check at it generally, like we said, if those things are really projects that have a, a direct bearing to the people, and their projects are uh, well intended. Like I said of Sokoto, he didn't do appointments. Mm. But the variations, people keep asking, why are you checking the variation at the dime minute mm. as well? Because, okay, uh, the teaching hospital is a project that everybody knows and it's well intended. The premier hospital is actually the one that's sent to immortalize that uh, Ahmad Vello, mm. which is a premier hospital. And it's in local government by local government. You also understand that. But pushing them at the dime minutes mm. is just why it's an issue. Mm. All right, now, so talking about things that, um, that can be done and things that can't be done. Um, for, for example, now, most of the situations happen when these um, last minute uh, decisions are taken by the outgoing administration. Once the incoming administration comes, it actually reverses some of these things. And yeah. just like you said, it puts the person at loggerheads with the people. Now, uh, so let's take the issue of Kano State, for example. The governor-elect issued an advisory for lenders that they should not lend the state government money unless it has its, his, his say-so or his, his, his contribution is, 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 is sorted out. And he says he's not going to honor any loan given within this period mm. without his contribution. Can he do that? No, 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 the power doesn't give him the right. That's why it's called an adversary anyway, mm. Mm. because it was supposed to be whether it's honored or dishonored. Mm. But when you make uh, it look like you were exercising the power, I can borrow from the words of the Professor Fagi, mm -hmm. who is a renowned uh, uh, ana uh, analyst political and a political ana analyst, yes. says um, it is morally and... and um, when you said morally, mm. definitely, you know, it's actually from moral decency and whatever that you do in a such manner. He has no right to 
question to an extent, but he can also make it clear like his dealers did. Mm. He won't honor, which is to say if anything is done at this time, mm. the one that is important is telling them that he might not honor. Yeah, when but the, the, the question is now, can he do that? After he becomes governor, will he say, okay, I'm going to honor this loan, but this one I'm not going to honor it because it was not done at the right time? N no, whether he does that, mm. like I said, the duration will only give him the feedback to know that I want to act based on this. Okay. Yeah. But for whether he can do it mm. now, he can't stop. Whether he said he's doing or he doesn't, there are people that are still going to lend the money. Mm. But when he is in office, at that time when mm. he has all the powers that is enshrined to him as a governor, he mm. can say, I made it this clear because I felt like there could be this and this and this, and it is now like this. Mm. But what if the proceedings are also normal? Exactly. And what the money that was lended was useful. Mm. If this were cleared at that time, he might have a very clear case than what it is at the moment. Because from an outsider, he will always feel like whatever that is going to be done at the moment since he became the governor elect might not be as good as mm -hmm. he wants it to be. Mm. So do, do you advise that, you know, when all of this transition period comes to play, we should have, you know, governors elect and the incumbent governor, you know, working together as if they are governors and deputy governors at that point. Would that be advised? Yeah, because um, in Nigeria, I think uh, one of the best thing that uh, President Muhammad Buhari did that everybody wouldn't take it away from him was completing all of the legacy project that the last administration had. We noticed, and people don't want to always comment on it, but I always used to say, I knew of continuation from a party to party that was discarded. Mm. And if one had come to continue, governors should be seen as a continuous thing just as it is. Like you said, whether you're incumbent, whether you are incoming, all the people that are more important is who you are governing, mm. which are the people of the state. Because uh, if I still borrow from Professor Fage, he still went ahead to say, Whatever that you're doing is not even doing it to the people that are elected, but the people, the, uh, the, the people that the governance is all about, which are the citizens. So if you are doing anything to hurt an incoming governor, which people of the states, the citizens have elect, whom are you hurting? Mm. The citizens. So continuation should be a way that, okay, I can't finish from you as a governor, so if I come in, I will still render you an elderly advice and I will also be a reference point to you. Let me not create that hitch that, okay, when you come, you feel you see me as someone who tried to truncate processes, even not clearly, mm -hmm. but who tried to stop me by doing what I should start or to hit the ground running, trying to settle the liabilities that they are. All right. Could this be uh, a, a direct consequence of how our campaigns are actually run? Because um, some of the most, some of these campaigns, when you look at them, they they are very vile. Lots of mudslinging, lots of name calling, uh, and all that. Do you think that's what makes it difficult after the elections for these two parties to come and sit down and say, okay, fine, let's work together? Because yeah. there there's a lots of animosity between 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 the two sides. Surely, so, you know, Nigerian politics, unfortunately, through, mm -hmm. it's like, um, it's not even now, it started from Berlin Conference when you have the nationalists trying to move for the Nigerian independence, and yet they still this bitterness and trying to unite themselves within themselves, mm -hmm. because the campaigns in Nigeria have never been as peaceful as dialogue in, okay, we have what we want to do for this country, so let's collectively do this thing. No. Everybody had to stay as an antagonist to another person without, like you said, the, our campaign get heated up to a level that lives are lost sometimes, mm -hmm. even if not reported. But sometimes we know how it is. The, mm. the, 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 the what's it called? The toggery, the, the, the vandalization. Let's just talk about the general of, violence. Yeah, yeah, violence of first order, where even you win elections um, to congratulate your counterpart becomes an issue mm -hmm. because a lot of expectation from each party is that whenever you come to sign a peace accord what is expected and what is agreed upon is we're doing all this for a state interest so if the state interest is our number one priority then why do we have a problem let's support the states to grow collectively as against 
I must come and I must win mm. and my person must win. I wanted to have a sustained system even when I'm out of the system. Let it be in a way that I still have a relevance in the government which I, which I am responsible for. Mm. And also there are stock, uh, you can see there are a lot of examples in states that went a different, I think Nigerian democracy is growing. Mm. Uh, checking what happened in Zamfara and some other states. Even the bin we were calling in question, it's a lot of things have shown that things are not right because if the governor can lost out uh, his anointed candidate and also himself mm. losing seat, Senate about 14, seat. you can count how many governors that did not make the Senate, which is to tell you that you have a true test of what you're doing, that people are assessing whether you have truly served or whether you were actually <laughs> serving <laughs> yourself. Mm. So if all of this were checked then, Government should be a way in a way that they can relate, they can, uh, they can do a lot of things in progressive manner rather than just this uh, last hitches or last uh, contract awards and uh, appointments. I think going forward, like you said, if a uh, National Assembly is going to look for it and see it as a matter of call because um, it will still interest you to know that 60% of the Senate and uh, more of advanced people that were former governor. Ex governors former. exactly. Yeah, so so it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a place where if they sit down and make the law, mm. ordinarily it should go, but because they knew they're protecting where they're coming from, it would be hard for them. But maybe if the, national, uh, the House of Reps tend to be, which is a more younger, mm. but thinking they will also, they're trying to also fit exactly. in the one day. Exactly. So everybody tend to make a law that goes in a way, either stopping his future, attempt to trying to mm. do what he's protecting that he has already left. Mm. That is because of a Nigerian uh, situation. But let's see if things will go differently because mm. it all boils down to trickle down effect of the governance from mm. the top to the bottom. If that is done and that is achieved, maybe we we'll would start uh, thinking governors wouldn't be acting like um, the demigods because that is why the implementation of the even the most powerful thing the Nigerian democracy would have witnessed is autonomy of the local government, which is a government that is close to mm. the grassroots. Okay. If it is actually being empowered, we wouldn't be talking about what the governor does at that minute because the, the local government would have also been as empowered as the state structure because that is the voice of the people. Mm. But yet, you can see how it has always been thrown to the dungeon when the attempts are made in the National Assembly, even when it tend to pass in views, the, the House of Assembly tend to reject it because they feel like when you let them have powers, you will not have a say per se because the local government chairman, the transition committees and all of those are the things that you do to control a state, mm. which if you don't have a joint accountant, they're scared of what they are going to get or not, then it becomes an issue. So all of these things are going to be checkmated. How do we do going forward? Let's try to implement every other unit of the governance, which the, the, the tier government, if it has a stance, mm. and local government feel like he's a chairman for the people, not mm. chairman for the governor, mm. then it becomes an issue of uh, progressive-minded. When you have this kind of situation, teachers' allocations appointment, on a very sincere note, is not even the duty of a governor. Hmm. Yeah, it is something that is actually supposed to be related to the local education. This authority. actually started mm. at when, uh, of course, there are accusations and local accusations that this is done to spite some political parties or this is done to spite the governor elect and all of that. At least, I, I think that is the honors of this um, concerns right now, which a lot of people are raising. But like you said, the way forward. And now, talking about the law Ibrahim talked about earlier, I think this is a time we start. I mean, you know, putting these laws in place and going for the proceedings, going for first and second reading and see how it's been assented at the end of the day, before the ne next election, actually. Yeah, it, it would be a good thing. But like I said, I, and he had concurred with me, the custodians <laughs> of the House of Representative and also Senate are the same mm. people who were responsible for the programs. Mm. So interest here. Yeah. Mm, yeah, so interest is actually my likely, like I said, an attempt would have been okay. Every local government, the 770, for a substantial and standing on their feet, 
by that time you will know that every governor will know that he has a problem. Have you asked yourself why mm. some governors don't even mm. conduct local government, government elections? elections? Exactly. Yes. No, because they want to have everything to themselves. Now, with that kind of mindset, now since you've opened the door to this, let's let's explore it a little bit. With that kind of mindset now that these governors actually have, mm. and with the kind of power over resources that having the local governments under them gives them, will we ever see local government autonomy? In as long as it is in the hands of these governors. Let, let's be honest, you know, it's good to be hopeful. Mm. Yeah. Seeing it and uh, seeing it, uh, I, I keep hoping for the better because the only thing why you think government is something that will come to solve situations that have not been solved is because of the hopefulness. Okay. When you're not hopeful, you just believe that, okay, nothing good is going to come. I will start the example by the area councils in FCT. They are not different, even if they are denied the second tier government. So the only way of persuasion to them is to have an autonomy or mm. a local government, because the only thing that you take in relevance ship is whether they have a governor or not, or mm. house of assembly or not. But yet, the local government receive good payments of uh, locations. But in the case of state, because of the mindset of the governors, it's not more of the money that they even want to attract what they want is the control of the local governments. Mm. So if they know that their money is in a joint account mm. and they sit down for Jack to meet and regulate on how to give who, if you're not in the good book of the governor, you're likely to even get what better sure. allocations, which is going to affect your local government. So the mindset of the governors and the governance, who makes the law, who legislates? Are the legislators ready to bring um, maybe believing that now that we're having a former legislator as a president-elect, maybe, mm. and uh, maybe we might tend to see things differently. And the deputy, a device too, who was also a senator, let's see if they can exploit from their book of experience and see both of them were governors, both of them were senators, and see if they might change to challenge the system which they know how mm. it operates and runs, and see where the common man voice mm. will be the interest of governance rather than interests of a few. But some, might, but some might say they, they were actually there, they benefited from these things and they didn't make a move. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, we said they do mm -hmm. or they don't. Now they are actually taking the seats of the federations and mm. a system where uh, a government where system is hardly finding itself back to rooted. Mm. Because I said, when they said system, I said yes, you have a uh, public service system that someone would be in the system for 30 years and you ask him what was his personal contribution to the growth of the nation. He hardly could tell you, but he knows mm. that the states of the nations have been paying him salary for the 30 years, being whether okay. from the degree to the directorate to, the, to whatever level that they have operated. What matters most is mm. having a system that works. And what makes it work? Having a target and allowing people believe that what we are after it's not just it's not just us it's okay. the people that we're governing mm, it's mm. putting the people first actually all right so when you have um when you have transition periods like this you we are, we're seeing a rash of um uh, transition committees being set up in every state uh, uh, what exactly is the function of these transition committees if they cannot be able to smooth over these things that we're talking about, yeah. whereby we, they can't uh, form a, as a platform for these two sides to actually come together to, 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 to make a decision and, 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 and make things go smoothly. What is actually the function of them? The function of transition committee, like I said, is actually to check meant what you're coming to inherit. Mm. What's the system? In every of the ministries, what has been done, what is yet to be done, what is left outstanding, what are the projects ongoing, which mm -hmm. ones are completed, what are the rest of, how much is it, what is the worth of the contraction. It's not just a, a bridging between two. No, it's mm -hmm. more like a checkmating of what do you have to work on. Okay. As much as, yes, you contested for governor, or you contested for whatever positions. You needed to know what is it, because you, only as a transition committee, you can be given access. And as such, even sometimes there are denial of access to some sensible, sensible materials or sensible information that you need to know. 
some are actually taking off some will come when you are in the system mm. then you realize that even when the transition committee not everything that was given to the transition committee but transition committee is supposed to be compositions of legal financial expertise and all that will come and check meant what has been done engineers town planners to know what are the standards how are it whatever you bring up to this level then they will take to know okay from now this is what you have. These are the documents you have. By the time they are doing handing over, you are presenting him to this. Then he opened a book. You come. This ministry, this is what I have received about you. Can I be briefed properly? Where's the contractors? Let know what is there. These are what the transition is just to provide you a transient move into a smooth path. It's not actually to cement the relationship. But most of the times when you're doing this, the moment transition committee are set, the incumbent always feel being checkmate mm. or being uh, being tussled to an extent mm. because you just have feeling like uh, we've I've seen in two occasions where I have served where an admin uh, an admin head of admin of the farm sec admin deny you some information deliberately with that wait until you are in the office then you see what it is okay. ordinarily as a transition committee member you're not even supposed to deny and access because someone who your principal who has set you as a member also wants you to get that mm. information and he is supposed to be allowed but just it's just like the same adversary that we said you have limit at which you can even force a system that you're not totally in charge of mm. but we know that you know getting information for this is to work and um, set things in place before the governor elect or whoever is taking um, in taking charge comes in but we have this problem of getting information from uh, let's say in court government agencies now what can we do to actually make that go away because that seems to be a very big problem you know when i keep saying system people will want to wonder why do i keep saying system is it that we don't have system yeah partly we don't have system because it will interest you to know some of the transition committee that have formed before now you will ask a contract of a billion, uh, two, three billion, yet there are no proper documentations to what those contracts are. But when you have a system, obviously it should even be digitalized. It's something that should be accessible that if the government allocations is meant open, why can't contracts be made public? Hmm. Because by the time you put it in a system, obviously if you go good, like if most of the projects you see outside Nigeria now you google Clark construction maybe the boulevard you see what is the cost of the project people that were involved in mm -hmm. it but the case of systems because of how manipulative the system is and what is gained from the system mm. they get scared to put it at the public consumptions yet when you go to the offices in charge of those contractual sums and all of them they are also limitations to what is put there in the open registry and what is put there in the secret registry mm. which one are you accessible to which do they want you so you only get accessible to what they want you to get what they don't want you to get you actually find it hard to get mm. sometimes they are what they call <laughs> system deletes anyway mm. okay. so they get to you don't even know how it gets missing but yet you just keep looking yeah there was a contract you keep seeing a lot of temporary files in contractual sums and it is to tell you that what happens to the main file that you're bringing a temporary file right, exactly. with the allocation letters and how the movement of transactions were made mm. and they just have a way of putting designated people who can defend all of this Obviously, without even yeah, blinking they, they, they call it smartness <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right well we look forward to may 29th by we hope for a peaceful transition and handover to uh, a new administration that can come and make uh, things better sadika worker thank you very much thank you for coming on the show and of course we appreciate your insights and of uh, the analysis and of course these perspectives thank you very much thank you all right and this is how we are going to wrap it up on uh, trust tv's uh, daybreak uh, this morning we had a wonderful time being here and of course making sure that your day gets off to the best of stars so why don't we do it all again tomorrow i am Ibrahim Yusuf. And it's Easter Monday, you're relaxing and uh, of course the Ramadan is still very on and we're going about our normal business. Please do stay out of trouble. My name is Martia Umar. I'll see you again. <laughs>